One of the things that is a common misunderstanding about switching from Python to Rust is that, hey, it already works with Python. You know, I don't want to rock the boat. Let's go ahead and stay with the language that I'm productive in. Well, I'm going to show you a use case here where I do think many intelligent people should consider the energy efficiency of the Python language. And in particular, I'm going to talk about two different things. First, a study that shows the energy and time uh, comparison across languages. And we're going to use C and Rust really as uh, the same thing. Uh, they're, they're basically, uh, in terms of energy efficiency, computational power, effectively equivalent. And we're also going to talk about Python in terms of you know, where it ranks in terms of energy efficiency and also computational performance. And I'm going to talk about two different studies. And I think what you're going to find out is that there isn't a really good reason in many scenarios to use Python for heavy computational loads, especially static loads, where you're deserializing JSON back and forth like a, a web microservice. And you should uh, consider the carbon footprint of the code you're writing, right? We, we know definitively there is a, uh, a problem happening on Earth. We need to think about how we use our resources. And if you can easily switch from one language to, to the other, especially with a tool like Copilot, you should at least consider it. And that's really the, the goal of this is to help you think about the problem of energy efficiency by the language you personally are using and to at least make an informed decision about what you wanna do going forward. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Here we have a very fascinating paper about ranking programming languages by energy efficiency. Uh, and you can see here that uh, there's a lot of research into this area and it's about comparing programming languages regarding uh, the efficiency from an energetic point of view. And if we go ahead and uh, get right down to uh, the, the crux of it, you can see that the two most energy efficient languages, if we normalize for global results in different operations, uh, is going to be C and Rust. So uh, effectively, they're equivalent, right? You can see that for all intents and purposes, if you say C, you say Rust, they're about the same. And then in terms of computational time as well, you can see the difference between C and Rust are effectively the same. Now, how does this compare to Python in particular, the most popular language on earth? Well, we can see that in fact, for all intents and purposes, Ruby, Python, Perl, are, are pretty close in, in terms of uh, the, the energy they use and also pretty close in terms of the time they, they use. So basically it's 70 times more energy uh, is being used by Python and equivalent interpreted languages. Also in terms of computational time, you can see here that it's about 70 times longer to do something in Python. In terms of memory, there also are some issues in, in terms of Python here. You can see that uh, in, if you compare it to Rust, it's about double the memory usage. And we're not even talking about multi-threaded programming, which is something that Python is not able to do uh, across multiple cores due to the global interpreter lock. And so people use multiprocessing instead, which is a memory intensive operation. So in a nutshell, if you do care about energy, you do care about computational time, Python is one of the worst uh, performing languages for both. And from a sustainability perspective, this is something your organization should consider. If it's easy to switch to Rust, would you do it? And I think that's really one of the, the questions that organizations should ask. Now let's dive into another one uh, that talks about this, uh, this uh, idea of computational performance. Recently, I was at a talk from Dr. David Patterson at Google, and he brought up this exact slide that talks about matrix multiply speed up over native Python. And I was actually able to ask him a question about this slide. And what he's mentioning here is that uh, matrix multiplication, so depending on how you you know craft your code and what it is you're, you're specifically doing, could be 62,000 times faster over native Python code. So we're really what we're seeing here is that Python in terms of computational performance really isn't a great language to use. And it's something that people should consider. Like what are the alternatives and, and can I do it? Can my organization do it? Can I use tools like Copilot, for example, to help me level up to a language like Rust? And, and if we look at the syntax, 
we can we can really see that Rust isn't too different than Python, and it it the 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 gain you're going to get by uh, really deeply considering speed up and deeply considering energy efficiency. Not only could it make an impact in terms of your budget, right? You could maybe save 50, 70 times uh, computational cost for a cloud provider, but you also could be being thoughtful about the sustainability goals of your organization.